Nick, what's the matter? Nothing. What are you doing down here at this time of the morning? Oh, I was awake. Didn't want to disturb you. How long have you been up? It's only tea made. Yeah. No. I used a tea bag. Should I get you some? Hmm. We'll get it. about me and Scott. We just have to get used to each other. Oh, I'm not worried about him. You'll have him eating out of your hands in no time. You've got away with men. <laughs> it's not Scott that's worrying you. What is? I have this idea. I wouldn't let me sleep. So far, so good? Mm-hmm. Billy. What time is it? Five past six. In the morning. What time do I get in? Answer the bleeper. It was half two, wasn't it? It won't stop bleeping till you answer it. Oh, it might be a wrong number. No, I don't think it's strange you're awake at this hour. I think it's strange I am. There's a bias satisfaction to be had from working while everybody else is asleep. Well, as long as you don't make a habit of it. No, I'll try not to. Right. I've got a long day's packing ahead of me. Why don't you come back to bed? I wouldn't be able to sleep. Fine. Come back to bed. Stay awake. This is flying through my head. All right. I'll see you in a few hours. Oh. Morning, Terence. What's going on? I'm cooking breakfast for me and Sandra. What's all this, Nadeau? Oh, I guess I'm just the wonderful bloke, aren't I? Oh, come on. All right. Sarah and I have got to get on, haven't we? Only for your sake. So, nice where I am to her. It's over. Thanks very much, mate. Look, just accept it. Look, I've slaved away cooking you that. Do you I have to eat it for you as well? All right. Breakfast is served. Lovely. Who said you was this? I couldn't sleep. So I thought I'd do something useful. Much appreciated, thanks. Yeah, well, I thought it might help us get back to, oh, well, you know, normal. Well, you were sharing a bedroom. How many times did you cook breakfast? Exactly. So what's normal about this? Well, nobody's forcing you to eat it, are they? Oh, come on, sit down. I didn't mean it. Lost my appetite. I can't do anything right, can I? Come on, eat your breakfast before it goes cold. I'm not hungry anymore. Pat? Eh, uh, he's not here. Where'd you go? Eh, uh, must have gone to check the van. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, OK. I can kill myself when I think about it, Bobby. All I had to do when I got out of that taxi was walk back towards Sheila and none of this would have happened. None of us. I don't get you, Matt. Well, Sheila and I were in the cab, right? Right. We were arguing. She got out and I carried on for a hundred yards. If that. Then I realised I had no money to pay the fare. So I got out and I walked towards the pub. Well, if I would have walked the other way, I would have seen Sheila getting attacked, wouldn't I? Why did I walk towards the pub? I never even had the money to buy a drink, Bobby. No use blaming yourself, lad, is it? 
What's done is done. I know, mate, but you can't help thinking about it. Hey, hang about. Did you tell the police where you got out the taxi? And you meet? Well, you got out the taxi, what, less than 100 yards away from the place where a few minutes later Sheila got attacked? Did you tell the police this? No, not really. I mean, they never asked me. Tony, you let me down. You bottled out. It's amazing how you can misjudge someone you think you know really well. You got scared. Well, so did I. You didn't stop me, though. Well, we all get scared. And sometimes we do something which we regret later. You're getting very philosophical in your old age. It's living with you two. <laughs> this Tony fella, he's a bit special, isn't he? Do you think you could have had something going? I know we could have. Oh, it's just for the record. Pat still feels the same way about you. Poor Terry. Stuck in the middle. Do you want to write to my your proofs? <laughs> Uh, okay. Got a job on? Yeah, that one. Back in about an hour and a half. A bit wet then, I'll do the washing. No, leave it. I'll do it when we come back. Is this what you call normal? Cooking breakfast and washing up? Yeah, you didn't eat breakfast, did you? Neither did you. No, just do me a favour, Pat. Stop trying to act normal, because normal is driving me round the bend. Just stop apologising for our relationship, it's over. No, you've got to let her go. Oh, um, I came to see your mother. Is she in? I don't know if she'd want to talk to you. Can I take the risk? you got a visitor. Hello. Uh, I wanted to... Well, I, I was wondering how... There were... are things that I, I wanted to say. Not the least of which is, is an apology for the other night. I'll put the kettle on. He's not staying. I want one. The course is now finished and... obviously you'll miss the last lesson. What do you want? A doctor's note? As well as offering my apologies and my, my sympathy, I, I, I wanted to urge you to continue your education, she, when you're better. I, I do mean that. You owe it to yourself. I hope they catch him wherever he is. Have they questioned you yet? Yes. It was easy to prove where I was. I was lucky. I wasn't. Well, as I said, I, um, I wanted to apologise for my part in what happened to you the other night. The night I was raped, you mean? Yeah. What have you got to apologise for? My behaviour towards you. It was disgraceful. I'm anything but proud of it. And I thought that I should come round and apologise in person, so to speak. Apologies accepted, so to speak. There was a misunderstanding between us. Yes. I thought you felt... Well, if there's anything I can do. Yes, there is. Go. Now. If not sooner. I'm sorry. Keeps happening. Keeps happening to me over and over again. I just can't stop thinking, Bobby. And I mean, I know Sheila's been through more than we could ever imagine, but 
I'm under suspicion now. And it's all down to the fact that I couldn't afford a taxi. I know what you're going through, lad, yeah? But I'm living at Bobby. I mean, I couldn't afford that taxi because I have no money. And I have no money because I have no job. And I can't remember the last time I had any money or a job. It's been that long ago. I can't even imagine having a job or money again. Three years this has been going on, Bobby. Three years. There's still some good can come out of it, you know, Matt. Oh, I don't say how, mate. Got a wife and kids, haven't you? Oh, no wife. Not anymore. The wait season's been crying buckets round at our house. It's over, Bobby. Me and her are finished. Oh, why was that? Been living with Mo, haven't I? Or didn't you notice? Oh, are you? Yeah. You and seasons after the part when you lost your job and you thought you'd lost your self-respect. Along comes a nice little woman and you think, aye, I've got my self-respect back here. That's fair enough. But just take a step back and tell me something. When did you stop loving Caesar? I don't know. No, I know you don't, because you haven't stopped loving her. I was in love with Mo, Bobby. I was. Matty, lad, I don't think you were. I think she was just well a job substitute, if you like. You what? No, honest, it's not as daft as it sounds. There's a lot of divorce amongst the unemployed, lad. Now, look, they took your job, they took your self-respect, they took your dignity, and now they're taking your marriage. And you know what, Matty, lad? You're not doing anything about it, are you? Well, I'll tell you something. I wouldn't let them take my marriage. I'd fight back. And that's what you should be doing now. Don't let them grind you into the ground, son. Get on the blower to Teresa. Fight back. He said he was going away, and when he had an address, he'd send one. But he hasn't sent it to you? Wouldn't even let me wash his clothes. Perhaps amongst his dirty washing, he has something to hide. Something, um, some stain he didn't want you to see. He couldn't have done it. Could he? <sighs> if he shows up here, maybe we can find out. Well, what do you think? Oh, it's not for me to give an opinion, Mrs Nolan. He did have that row with Sheila in the pub. Lots of people must have heard them, and the next thing is he's back here picking up his things and calling her for everything. And blaming Sheila? Yeah. Of course, he started blaming me then. Thought there was a conspiracy against him, me and Sheila. He's blaming us for the weather, anything, everything. He didn't know what he was saying half the time. When I saw him coming up that path, my heart was pounding. I thought he'd come back. I really did. I was made up because I wanted him back. And when he left, I felt like a right bloody fool. Look, I know I'll be away for a month, but if there's anything I can do, anything. Nothing. Unless you can find a way to get me to go to sleep. Not much good on pills. But I do know you can get help for that. It's quite common, isn't it, being unable to sleep after what you've been through? That's right, you know. I don't want to put you off, but I have read a lot about this. I think you should contact the Rape Crisis Centre. They're very helpful. And they do know what they're doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now think about it. Actually, there is something you can do for me, love. Go on. Let us know if you see a nice little house for sale somewhere. I'd like to move. Matty, you've got a wife and kids up here on your own doorstep, haven't you? And you're thinking of going... Oh, you're not even thinking you're planning to move down south. Being unemployed doesn't only destroy your self-confidence, lad. It's addled your brain. Oh, I told her I was going and I went. I said I'd had nothing to do with Mo. I said we're finished. I kicked myself out. In five years' time, when you're looking back on this, it won't make any difference who kicked you out, will it? Teresa wants you back. I wouldn't bet on that, mate. Well, I would. I'd bet my life on it. I'll always be an open wound. Every little row we had, she'd drag it up and throw it in my face. Oh, come on, lad. You know better than that. Even I know her better than that. All right. Suppose I got stuck in the pub but you and I was late getting home. She'd immediately think I was with another woman. When all the time you were with another man. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do, Bob? I'll tell you what you're going to do. Invest in British Telecom. 
pretend you're the shareholder. He didn't tell us he got out of the cab almost immediately after Mrs. Grant. I have his statement here. No mention of it at all. Mrs. Grant gets out of the taxi. Thirty seconds later, your husband gets out of the same taxi and almost immediately, Mrs. Grant is attacked and raped. Or at least the taxi driver said he got out straight away but couldn't uh, afford the fare or something. He's been unemployed for three years. But can still afford to have a row with your best friend in the pub. Well, rowing costs nothing. Mrs. Nolan, your husband had the motivation to attack Mrs. Grant. Did you know that his lover, this uh, Mo, sent Mrs. Grant a poisoned pen letter? Now, that's an act of aggression which we cannot ignore. Also, uh, his statement omits details which incriminate him. Are you saying he's... a real suspect, like? Uh, well, we would like to question him, certainly. He uh, may be the final piece in the jigsaw. Now, in all honesty, can you put your hand on your heart and say he's the same man you married? He said that himself. So I'm not your gentle matty anymore. Well, men can change. They can become violent and threatening just like that. He said he was scared he might stick a knife in me. He said that? Yeah. Well, if he has indeed committed one violent crime, there is no reason he should not commit another. There is the possibility he might try and attack you. Well, don't worry. That's what we came here for. I'll miss you, darling. I wish you were coming. I'll miss you more. And my dad's bigger than your dad. <laughs> you look after yourself, won't you? How have I managed these 40 years? That is a complete mystery. <laughs> you think you'll be able to sleep better when I'm away? Why well, didn't develop insomnia on meeting you? He comes and goes. I've learned to live with it. And with any luck, you'll learn to live with me living with it. <laughs> You're into the lesson. I suppose there'll be a lot of things we'll learn about each other from now on. Hmm. I'm going to enjoy learning about you. <laughs> well, be warned, it's not all good. One thing. Let's not anticipate problems. Let's just live in the present and enjoy it. We'll deal with problems if and when they arise. What happens if she's not in? No problem. She won't answer. Listen, it's me. Listen, I want to see you. Yeah, I'm on my way. Okay. Tara. He's on his way now. We've got work to do. Mike. Wasn't too hard, was it? No. Come on, let's get there before she meets another fella. Come on, I'll drop you off. Oh, thanks, Bob. Great you behave yourself. Get out. There you go, Mum. What's your mum with? Oh, love, I don't know whether I feel very hungry at the moment. Old Chinese proverb. People who don't eat, die. <laughs> you weren't serious what you said before about moving. Love, it just seems that the only way I can shake off everything that's happened is to make a fresh start somewhere new. Yeah, but you're proud to this house. It means a lot to you. What about all the friends you've made? We can make new friends. Yeah, maybe. Mightn't be the answer, though. You can't escape your problems by running away from them. You've got to face up to them and solve them. Anyway, it can be dead stressful moving. Quite disturbing, psychologically. You think about enough of that, do you? Yeah, well... I just need to do something. This rape crisis centre. Where exactly is it? Why don't you go upstairs, Mrs. Nolan? Leave this to us. Oh, I'm glad you're back. I've been worried. Take it easy, love. It's only half twelve. Worried about me? Why? What's happened? Sheila Grant. Hey, but that didn't happen in a close, love. I know. But, um... Oh, come on, will you? This is a good neighbourhood. That's why we moved here in the first place, remember? Look, I've got to have a bath. 
Hey, I bet you're a pound to a penny. This thing goes off while I'm having a soak. But I don't care. I've been looking forward to this all the way home. Sure you don't want me to take it out to the front door? Oh, you've done enough for me already, mate. It's going to walk the last few yards myself. <laughs> she a little bit chuffed when I tell her. The best news I could give her this. Hey. Thanks again, mate. Yeah, OK, Chief. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. OK, ta-da. Hurry up and dry yourself, will you? You're ruining the carpet. Oh, sorry. Your dinner's ready. No time. You're not going anywhere without eating your dinner. Yeah. You're right. Stop him. That's him. In the beige anorak. Let him come to the door. Matthew Nolan. I'm a police officer. Oh, come on. I'm arresting you on suspicion of committing the offence of rape. What's going on here? Jeez, hello. Jeez, the way off the mark. Jeez, Jeez. You got the wrong man. You're out of order. I'm telling you, you're out of order. You did the right thing, you know. 